Hey guys, it's me, Muddy, with the Whiteboard Academy. I hope you're doing well. Coming to you today with some advanced tips for using your iPad with a Mac computer, especially for using drawing applications. So going to cover today two different, the two main ways that you can connect an iPad to a Mac, the differences between them and some of the pros and cons for each. I'm going to show you today a way to wirelessly connect your iPad as a webcam. Um, so using some of that kind of HDMI ability, which gives certain drawing apps kind of some special powers. Um, and then bonus, at the end of this video, I'm going to show you the best way, in my opinion, the best way to uh, show your iPad on your desktop uh, in a way that you can do two different things. You can share that into a meeting and so get the kind of best resolution by, by, showing, your, uh, by showing your screen and your iPad on your screen, but in a way that's quick and efficient, but also in a way that you can record your iPad screen. And so we'll talk about some of the benefits of that as well. So Let's get started. Um, you may, and let me switch to this scene. Uh, I've got my iPad here on my desk and there are, there are basically two main ways to connect an iPad to a Mac. So one is through a data cable, okay? So that's, that's what's showing here, a data cable plugged into the Mac's USB port and um, your Mac or your iPad will show up on your Mac. You can select it um, in Zoom. You can use a screen share using the cable method, right? So connect with a cable. Um, and also in some camera apps, it will show up as a camera, like ManyCam, for instance. You can connect your iPad through the data cable, and it will show up as a device that you can connect. I have also shown uh, a way that you can connect your iPad as a camera using an HDMI cable and an HDMI capture device, right? So for that, you need a dongle. And this is still my first generation iPad Pro. So 12.9 uh, inch, 12 point something inch. <laughs> uh, so it still uses the lightning connector. The newer ones use the USB-C uh, and Thunderbolt, but uh, lightning dongle goes in there. And then my HDMI cable, plugs into that dongle, and then the other end of the HDMI cable plugs into an HDMI capture device, and then this plugs into the computer just through regular USB, and it shows up to the computer uh, just like any webcam. So this would show up, in this case, it would say USB video device or cam link uh, in this case, and it would show up like a webcam. And the advantage of that is for a visual practitioner who is drawing on their iPad during a meeting, you can select your iPad screen and the drawing to be your video source. So um, if the presenter is using screen share to show slides or something like that, you don't have to rely on the screen share functionality. You can show your iPad as your webcam, right? So talked about that in the past using this HDMI capture device. Here's the big difference. When you um, connect your iPad with a data cable, okay? So I'm just gonna use, um, well, actually let's use this. Um, so I was gonna say, let's use ManyCam as an example. And for a long time, I recommended ManyCam I haven't been recommending ManyCam for a while now because I find that it uses too many resources. It, it, it makes the computer work really hard. Now, it still works, and it's easy to use. That's one of the things I really like about it, but um, it does take a lot of computer resources. But there are other programs, Ecamm Live on a Mac or OBS. Um, but for this example, let's just think about the screen share functionality. If we were gonna use screen share through a Zoom meeting, when you go to the screen share menu on a Mac, 
uh, and you want to connect your iPad, there's two options. One option says connect through AirPlay. The other says connect through a cable. Okay, and so that would be where a data cable might come into play. Now, the problem is if you connect with a data cable and on a PC, you only have the option of AirPlay. You don't have that option of using a data cable on a PC. That's only an option on a Mac. Um, but the challenge with that is if you use a data cable, so here's the two ways, the two main ways that connect um, an iPad to a, to a Mac computer, the cable or through HDMI capture, whether that is AirPlay or HDMI capture. Now, when your iPad is using a data cable, it's using the, the functionality or the um, kind of technology that's being used to share your screen is a screen recording functionality. You're not actually recording the screen, but if you, um, you have to give permission to your Mac to allow it to use screen recording because that's the technology it uses. The challenge is the iPad itself doesn't know that it's connected to an external device. It doesn't know that the screen is being shown on an external device. And so as a result in Procreate or Concepts or Fresca, where you have that project canvas mode where it shows the kind of clean interface, it doesn't show your tools, it doesn't show you zooming in and out, those kinds of things, project canvas mode. That doesn't work when you are connected with a data cable because the iPad and the program, the software that's running on the iPad, doesn't know that it is connected to an external display. In contrast, if you use AirPlay or if you use an HDMI capture device with a dongle and connect that to the computer, um, and to follow this example for screen share and Zoom, if you were to connect through AirPlay and then you go to screen mirroring on your iPad and connect to uh, the Zoom meeting, it will show a clean interface with project canvas mode. Because with AirPlay, with screen mirroring, the iPad knows that it's connected to an external display. It knows that it's using that uh, uh, screen mirroring, screen uh, um, AirPlay or screen mirroring. It knows that the iPad is being shown on an external display. So in Fresca, Concepts, Procreate, Project Canvas mode will show a clean canvas, okay? The same thing happens when you use an HDMI capture device. Um, so back to showing your iPad as your camera, okay, we're no longer using the screen share functionality. Our, our host or speaker or presenter is gonna use screen share, show slides. We as a visual practitioner just wanna be able to show the clean iPad screen as our video feed, okay? Um, could use HDMI capture, and that will allow us to show a clean interface. I wanna give you another way to do this wirelessly, okay? So here's what this requires. So you can, you can take a, um, well, let me back up, pause just for a second. Huh. If you have ever gone to the screen share, let me go back over to um, the split view. On your iPad, if you've ever gone to the control center and clicked on that screen mirroring icon, normally the things that show up in this list, now if you happen to do start initiate a screen share via AirPlay, in Zoom, Zoom would actually show up on this list. Normally, Zoom is not showing on this list and unless you've initiated that screen share. Normally, the kinds of things that you, your iPad wants to screen share to are things like an Apple TV, okay? So you see that, select, you see that on the list here, Apple TV at the top. 
Now, an Apple TV typically is connected to a TV, right? Connected to a TV screen and you're watching, you know, different things on the Apple TV. But the way that an Apple TV connects to um, a, a display or a TV screen is with an HDMI cable. See where I'm going yet? So you could take an Apple TV, connect it to a HDMI capture device, plug that into the computer. And if you did that, let's, uh, let's see here. If you did that, what would happen is you'd be able to bring up your Apple TV as your camera, okay? Now you're like, well, why would I wanna connect my Apple TV as my camera? Because now, watch what happens. If I, from my iPad, if I connect screen mirroring to my Apple TV, okay? So my Apple TV is showing. Now, if I switch over to that, oops, you weren't seeing that. Let me go back because I had, I wasn't showing it on the screen. There we go. All right. So on my iPad, let me stop screen mirroring. On my iPad, if I swipe down from the corner to get to the control panel and I click on screen mirroring and I connect to the iPad, or I mean, uh, connect to the Apple TV, what just happened on my screen, I can see on camera four on my system here on camera four, that my iPad screen just showed up as my camera. Let me switch over, huh? check it out, okay? So iPad four is now, and if I, uh, let's see if I bring this on now. Yeah, now you can see me down in the corner. So now, with this camera is now the iPad screen as a clean feed. And here's the thing, check it out. It's wireless because it's actually using screen mirroring to the Apple TV, okay? So it's wireless between my, um, oh, well that didn't work, right? Huh. Um, it's wireless between my Apple TV and there we go. This 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 will work. Okay, so now I'm I'm completely wireless between my iPad and the Apple TV. Okay, so whatever I've got screen mirroring turned on, so whatever is showing on my iPad is showing screen mirroring on the Apple TV. And so if I switch back over to that, you'll see whatever is happening on my iPad is showing as my camera, as my camera feed, okay? Through the Apple TV, but now I am completely wireless. So here's the thing, an Apple TV, you can go all the way back to generation three of the Apple TV. I forget what generation we're on right now, five, six, maybe more. So generation three is a while back and you can find used Apple TVs on Craigslist for 40 or 50 bucks because they're not super great devices as Apple TVs anymore. Um, but here, I'll show you the, the, the clicker for this because this is kind of a dead giveaway. Uh, you may even have an Apple TV from this generation. Uh, it was before they had kind of the touch. This is still just kind of a directional clicker. Um, so an Apple TV generation three. So that's what I did. I found one on Craigslist for 40 or 50 bucks, went and bought it. And all I have is that Apple TV connected to my computer through an HDMI capture device. So it'll show up as my webcam and I can connect my devices to it and be completely wireless, but still have the benefit 
now let me show you if I go back here and go into Procreate, okay, a drawing application. If I go into Procreate and you'll see right now, I do not have project canvas mode turned on. Um, and you can see me zoom in and out. You can see me, you know, choose different tools. But if I go up here and I go to my preferences and I turn on, whoops, and I turn on project canvas mode, watch. No. <laughs> so now it is completely showing. And I can show you if I hold this up right here and I zoom in and out on the screen, you'll see that. Um, the Apple TV feed is the clean project canvas mode. So this is exactly what we want. We want that project canvas mode. So if I bring up different tools, you can't see me bringing up different tools, but yet I can draw on the screen and you can see me draw in real time on the screen and it's locked off in project canvas mode. So this is exactly what we want to happen. Um, so quick review, two ways to connect, two general ways to connect an iPad to a Mac. One is with a data cable and one is through AirPlay or HDMI capture. Um, the benefit of using AirPlay or HDMI capture is because you can use project canvas mode it'll kind of show a, a clean canvas to your audience. Um, and you can do that through an HDMI capture device directly from the iPad using a dongle. And that works well, but now you are tethered, right? You're on a leash basically, right? You, you have this cable connected. But if you take this same setup, and connect this to an Apple TV, you can then have an Apple TV show up as your webcam and you can connect your iPad wirelessly through AirPlay to the Apple TV. And then you can use project canvas mode, but still have the freedom of being wireless. Or in this case, if you're gonna be using it all day, you may still wanna plug the charging cable into it. Um, in any case. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. Huh. And hopefully that's a good trick. Uh, hopefully you got benefit from that using and uh, uh, the gist is using an Apple TV uh, as a wireless receiver that you can connect through an HDMI capture device. Okay. That's the first big part that I wanted to talk with you about. And we're going to build on that for the second part, but um, the second, this kind of bonus content here at the end is, um, so here's how all this originated. I had um, a visual practitioner reach out to me, uh, actually reached out in a graphic facilitation group saying, help, <laughs> I've got an event coming up. I want to be able to show my iPad as my camera during the regular part of the meeting. But then during the kind of featured at the end of the meeting, they want to come to me and feature and kind of showcase the graphic recording. But this meeting is not going to be in Zoom where I could use Zoom's built-in tools to show my iPad. This meeting is going to be in another platform. It's going to be in Teams. And with Teams, I can't share my iPad screen directly in the same way. And if I try to use ManyCam with a data cable, use ManyCam with a cable to show my screen um, in Teams, uh, Project Canvas mode doesn't work. They see the interface, they see me zooming in and out, and it's a little cumbersome to go from one way of using, you know, connecting with an HDMI capture device um, during the main part of the video when it's being shown as a, as a or main part of the meeting when it's being shown as a video, but then switch to a data cable and many cam and this kind of um, little bit of a hodgepodge way to show during the feature. And it still doesn't look great because it, it, it doesn't have project canvas mode. So 
I was able to connect with them and talk through these two different approaches and say, okay, so all we need to do is we need to be able to get your iPad screen to show up on your desktop as a nice clean feed. And then you can kind of switch to that and um, share, you know, screen share that um, window um, and be able to show it cleanly. So uh, when I showed her this next approach, she was blown away. <laughs> uh, and you may be too. Uh, and actually the, re the other reason this was on my mind is because I had shared a post last year about a whiteboard video I had drawn. It got some recent comments on it, so it brought it back up in the feed, and there's been a couple of people responding or, or commenting on it recently. And in that video, I talked about how I, uh, the last time I did a whiteboard video for a client, I didn't use the time-lapse feature within the program. Instead, as I drew on my iPad, I had it plugged in with an HDMI capture device into a computer, and I recorded it in real time as a video on the computer. So if it took me a half an hour to draw a, a panel, I had 30 minutes of video to work with to do the whiteboard video and kind of condense that down to, you know, a, a minute or two of, of, of video. But if I had used the time-lapse features within the program, like Procreate has a time-lapse feature, I don't have any control over how long that time-lapse is and it's super fast. So I actually, in my whiteboard video, might need to stretch out that time-lapse to fill with the voiceover, depending on the, the, the subject or the uh, script. And you don't want to have to stretch out that limited amount of video from the time lapse recording. It's way better if you have a full length recording that you can condense down. It's, you're going to have so much easier to work with because I can make the edits where I want them to line up with the voiceover and kind of condense this part a certain amount and this part a certain amount. And so this next trick I'm going to show you will also allow you to record your iPad screen. So you can do the same thing. If you wanted to record in real time and have that full amount of video and then condense it down. All right. So let me switch to... All right, let me switch to my iPad screen. Okay, so here is an iPad. And what I'm gonna do, the software that we're gonna use for this is QuickTime Player. So if I open QuickTime Player, when it first opens, it wants to be a player, right? It wants to um, say, okay, what video do you want me to play? But QuickTime also has the ability to record. And so if I go up here to file and I say new movie recording, what happens is I get this interface that opens. Now I'm not recording yet. But and this drop down here next to it will allow me to choose. Now I am uh, the 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 Mac that I'm showing you here is a Mac Mini, so it does not have a built-in webcam. But if you were on a a MacBook Pro or a, a MacBook Air or some MacBook that had a video cam, had a webcam, you would see that camera listed here, and that would probably be your default. It would probably come up and and show you uh, on the screen uh, because that's the camera that would be selected by default. In this case, the only camera, the only webcam that this Mac mini has attached to it is the HDMI capture device. The, so it shows up as USB video. And so right now, this is a live feed of what's happening on my iPad, right? So if I get my pen and I draw on my iPad, you can see that drawing show up on the screen. Now it's not recording at the moment, but it's showing on the screen which means if you were in an online meeting and you wanted to 
use the screen share function to show your iPad screen um, in nice kind of high resolution and show that full screen, you could have QuickTime up on your computer and then in the soft, in the meeting, online meeting, so Zoom is easy, but this works with any of them, right? So this works with Teams, this works with Google Meet, any time, that's what it was. It wasn't Teams, it was, it was Google Meet that this, uh, uh, that, our, that our peer visual practitioner was using, uh, if I remember correctly now. Um, when you go to share screen in that online meeting platform, you would just share this QuickTime screen, right? And whatever shows on the screen is gonna be part of your screen share. So now as you're drawing and you notice it's still in project canvas mode. Um, and if I stop moving my mouse for a minute, the that little record um, uh, dialogue goes away. So now it's really is a clean, a clean feed, right? So it shows this. So this is a way QuickTime, QuickTime player. And then what you do is you go up to file, new movie recording. And then you come down on your top of your screen and click this drop down next to the record button and choose the camera you want. In this case, USB video is my HDMI capture device. Okay. Um, and I'm, I'm not recording yet, but it's showing on the screen, right? So I could resize this window and I could, you know, show this in a meeting. I could also, boom, start recording. So now this is actually recording a video. If I were doing a whiteboard video, um, or any kind of drawing illustration, this is recording it through QuickTime, right? So now if I stop, boop, you'll see, watch, it recorded a video. If I click play, it's gonna show you, there it is, me scribbling. I'm not doing that right now. That is the recording that we just captured just a minute ago. Okay, so now it is, showing that video. It recorded a QuickTime video when we hit record. So now imagine, I'm gonna pause this um, and let me go back here. So now imagine if you wanna do a whiteboard video or just record you drawing an illustration, right? And send someone a, a little GIF or send someone a little animated uh, video of you drawing something. You could use this. Um, so you'd go to QuickTime. First thing you'd want to do is connect with an HDMI capture device, then open QuickTime Player, go to File, New Movie Recording, and, and then click the drop down next to the record button and choose your HDMI capture device. In my case, it was called USB Video. Um, you'll choose your USB capture device, and then your iPad screen is now showing. And you can draw and click record and draw. So nice, huh? <laughs> High five, boom. So those are some pro tips for uh, some advanced tips for using your iPad with a Mac. And hopefully now if you ever run into that situation where uh, you're using a data cable and you can't get a clean project canvas mode to work, you'll understand that that's because um, it uses two different technologies. So if you can get AirPlay or HDMI capture, your iPad knows it's connected to an external device. So hopefully this is helpful. Please consider me a resource. If you uh, want to uh, solve a problem in your workflow or optimize your digital studio or just have some quick questions, please consider me a resource. Uh, happy to jump on a free 15 minute call or book a one hour coaching call and uh, help you dial in your system. Cheers.